This is Servant Marcia Carney with Escape to Heaven. Spirit of the Lord is upon me. His anointing is empowering. The kingdom of the Lord is within me. And He's calling me. Tallahassee, how are you this wonderful morning? It's 11.30 a.m. and you're listening to 94.1 Wave 94. I am so happy that I'm here because I love escaping from the craziness of this world. So guess what? Escape to Heaven, Servant Marcia, Heaven on Earth Ministries of Jesus Christ. We're here again. And the thought today is what happens when the Lord has shown you that you are indeed blessed personally by Him, but you don't believe it. What happens to us in cases like that? I want to believe that God has truly blessed my existence on this earth, and I know that you do as well. But there are moments when life seems to just batter us down. And when that happens, do you give up on God? And is there a consequence? Well, We're going to go and look in the word of the Lord in Deuteronomy, the first chapter. Wow, there is an incredible, huge penalty for what God terms rebellion. Now, you and I feel that it's just I'm having a weak moment, but then the Lord looks at it quite differently. So we're going to look at the history. Um Moses had all these people that he had brought from Egypt through the power of the Most High. And it was already like the 40th year, the 11th month, and the first day of the month. So that means it's getting close to being 41 years. (laughs) And so Moses is speaking to the children of Israel And um, this is after he had killed the king of the Amorites. And um, Moses began to explain the law that God had given. So we're starting at the first chapter of Deuteronomy. I would say verse six. The Lord our God spoke to us in Horab, saying, you have dwelt long enough at this mountain, turn and take your journey and go to the mountains of the Amorites to all the neighboring places in the plain, in the mountains, in the south, to the land of the Canaanites and to Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates. See, I have set the land. This is the Lord speaking before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give to them and their descendants. And I spoke to you. Now this is Moses. At that time saying, I alone am not able to bear this. So Moses is showing that he has grown because he is utilizing the power of delegation because he says, the Lord, your God has multiplied you. And here you are today as the stars of heaven in multitude. Now, this is for over a 40 year period God has proven his faithfulness. Not only did he keep those that left as slaves, but he has greatly multiplied them. And so now that's you and I. God delivers us from sin and we become these new creatures. We become actually prosperous. We see our families turn from sin and wickedness to the Lord. And so 
Now here comes the moment of God fulfilling the real promise that only you know about that he's made to you. And so here's Moses speaking. May the Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times more numerous than you are now and bless you as he has promised. How can I alone bear this burden? I mean, you're so much, so many people. I'm one man. So he told them, choose wise, understanding, and knowledgeable men from your tribes, and he would make them the heads over all of these tribes. And so they did that, and he made leaders of uh, 10 and 50, 100, 1,000. And if you think about it, even today, in the society that we live in, we still live according to this kind of delegation. Um, then he commanded the judges to hear the cases and so forth. But let's get to the heart of the matter. The heart of the matter is that at some point, God came and spoke to Moses again. So he's now saying at verse number 20, that you've already come to the mountains of the Amorites that the Lord your God has given or is giving you. So now go up and possess it as the Lord God of your fathers have spoken. Do not be fearful or discouraged. Now here's Moses talking. He said, every one of you came back to him and said, look, why don't we let one guy from each tribe go and check it out for us? So right there, Doubt is beginning to surface because if they believed the Lord, they would have just game busted right on in to that land. But instead, they're saying, ah, we don't know. Let's send somebody first and let them come back with the reports about the Amorite mountains. And so, you know, Moses thought, OK, it's a good plan. And, and really, Moses should not have agreed with it. He should have said, hey, God said, go up, guys, go up. But he didn't. He agreed with the plan because he felt like, all right, delegation, delegation. So they departed. They went up to the mountains and they took the fruit of the land and they brought it back and said, it is good land. Okay, but we're not going up there. So Moses is letting them know that that is called rebellion, that they rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. And then they complained saying that the Lord hates us. He has brought us out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. How many times have God told you to start a business, to uh, start a ministry, to uh, perform something that you know is way beyond your capacity? And instead of you doing it, he may have even told you to invent something. And, uh, you know, he may have made you to be a doctor, a lawyer, and or, or a teacher, whatever, or a ruler. Uh, maybe he told you to run for government, but you won't do it, even though you have seen and lived through all the many blessings of the Lord. But now here comes time for you to fulfill the destiny. And at that moment, Fear and doubt takes you over. Let's look at what happened to the Israelites and let's hope that we would never do what they have done, even though most of us are doing it right now today. So here's what the Israelites said. Where can we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our hearts. They said that the people are greater and taller than us and that the cities are great and fortified all the way up to heaven. How can we take that over? We have seen the signs of the Anakim there. So what all those words mean is that the spies or the scouts that went to look at the land of the Amorites came back with a report and said, man, these people are extremely tall. They're big. They're huge. Their buildings go all the way up to heaven. And by the way, they are descendants of giants or the fallen angels. How can we, we don't, we can't do it. We're not able. And so Moses then said that I told you guys 
Do not be afraid and do not be terrified of them because the Lord, your God, who goes before you, he will fight for you. Just as he did when he pulled you out of Egypt, just as he did as he took care of you in the wilderness. He carried you. The Lord, your God, carried you as a man carries his son. But no matter Moses is saying, no matter what I told you, you still did not believe the Lord, your God. So at this point, the Israelites are now guilty of a couple of things. One, uh, fear, doubt, discouragement, rebellion, and finally, disbelief. Okay, so you wouldn't believe the Lord your God who went in the way before you to search out a place for you to pitch your tent, to show you the way you should go, in fire by night and in the cloud by day. And this is the entity, this God, this great God, is the one you choose not to believe. So guess what happened? The Lord heard the sound of your words and was angry and took an oath. God took an oath saying, surely not one of these men of this evil generation shall see that good land, which I swore to give to their fathers, except Caleb, he shall see it, and to him and his children I am given the land on which he walked, because why? He wholly, completely followed the Lord and believed them. The Lord was also angry with Moses and said that, Moses, you shall not go into the land either. And I used to wonder about that because it looked like Moses did so much that God asked him to do. Moses showed so much faith. But the point is, did he show faith at the moment of destiny? Okay, what does that mean? That means that you can show faith in God over and over and over again. But there is a moment in your life that you were created for, and that's called destiny. Destiny impacts not just you, but many others that you will never see. And when you do not believe God for your destiny, not only have you failed, not only will you not be the multiplication that God created you to be, but there will be many, many others that will not even come to the Lord or know about him because you did not choose to walk in your destiny. And that's what happened with Moses. Now I know the answer because he agreed with the naysayers. He agreed with the plan to send 12 instead of saying, no, we must go up because God said it. Whoa, that is scary because oftentimes we do not even view that we are a part of the decision making process because we're thinking that this destiny belongs to them, not to me. That's what Moses thought. And the penalty was that he also could not enter into the land. Joshua, the son of Nun, who stands before you, he will go. So now Moses is saying, so encourage him because he shall cause Israel to inherit the promise that God has given. Wow. This is very interesting. I'm trying to tell you that, you know, when the Israelites realized that they had angered God, then they tried to change their mind. And they said, well, we'll go fight now. And the Lord told Moses, no, tell them, do not go, because I will not go with them. So that's another thing that happens when we don't believe that God has actually blessed us with an enormous destiny. We don't believe it and we don't move in faith, right? And then subsequently we repent and now we try to move. But the reality is that God was with you initially. He's not guaranteed to be with you when you finally come to quote unquote 
your senses. And that's what happened with Israel. The Lord said, no. He told Moses, tell them not to go. I am not with them. And guess what? True to their nature, they rebelled and they went to go fight the Amorites. And Moses is saying how the Amorites in verse 44 chased them like they were bees, like they were ants, like the grasshoppers that they said they were. And when they returned, they wept to the Lord. But guess what? God would not listen. He would not give ear. So now what we learned is when we do not believe the blessings and the promises of the Lord, we we literally stand to in a position where we may have to face the anger of our God, the anger of our Father for not believing Him for not trusting him. I'm talking not just to you. I'm talking to myself because we can live this life. I went to my class reunion this weekend. I didn't realize I've been out of high school for 50 years. And I saw lots of my classmates. Wow. They look awful mostly. <laughs> Oh, God. And very few looked like they were full of life and vibrant and excited about living. And I was thinking about that. What did that mean? And basically, it means that we can go through life and we experience all the things that we experience that that attempts to break us down and cause us to be filled with fear as opposed to being filled with faith in God. I am trying to encourage you to choose from this moment on to walk in faith because faith will bring you life, L-I-F-E. Faith will bring you joy. Faith will bring you peace. Faith will bring you healing. Amen. And um, you don't have to look old and be old, even though you're 70 or, or whatever, 60 or 80. You must remember that these bodies were designed to live at least 120 years. So you can live a lifestyle where you can still be invigorated, filled with life, and still walk in the destiny that God has given to you. That's my point. So if we do not believe the promises of God, even after he has shown us over and over and over again how great he is and how faithful he is. Over in Hebrews, the um, here I believe it's the third chapter where it's saying, it's going to talk about beware of unbelief. And that's what happened to that. And, you know, did you hear what Moses said? After 40 years, they were as numerous as sand and stars in heaven. And yet of that multitude, the original generation got called evil and did not allow them to even enter into their destiny, the promised land. And it said that, uh, let me go back to Deuteronomy, because it literally says, moreover, and this is in still the first chapter, verse number 39, Deuteronomy, it said, moreover, your little ones and your children, who you said would be victims, right, to the Lord, that's what they said, who today have no knowledge of good and evil, they shall go in there. To them I will give the promise, and they shall possess the land. Amen? So my point is, beware of unbelief, particularly serving the God that we have, where he over and over and over and over and over again delivers you, heal you, restore you, bless you, and you know it. So let me read the Bible. Therefore, holy brethren, partakers, of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful 
to him, God, who appointed him as Moses also was faithful in all his house. So there it is. Moses was faithful. It was just that one event. He agreed with the grasshopper people to alter the plan and to send the 12 as opposed to saying, get up, guys, let's go in and take this land over. Wow. So God considered this one more worthy of glory than Moses, meaning Jesus, uh, inasmuch as he who built the house has more honor than the house. Okay. For every house is built by someone, but he who built all things is God. Okay. So therefore, as the Holy Spirit says today, if you will hear his voice, do not hearten your hearts as in the rebellion. So the rebellion of the Israelites in the wilderness has now been termed two words, the rebellion, the great rebellion. In the day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers tested me, tried me, saw my works for 40 years. Therefore, I was angry. This is the Lord with that generation and said, they always go astray in their heart and they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. See, walking in your destiny, walking in the promise of the Lord is in fact your rest. It's what you have been programmed to maximize in. And so when we move fear and disbelief away from our eyesight and instead replace it with the faith in the almighty God who has already proven that he is faithful, we are then allowed to enter into the promises of the Lord, the, the, to realize those things that we by ourselves cannot do, but with the Holy Spirit and the fact that Jesus has already done it all so that we can boldly and with confidence enter into the throne room. Now with the God that has never left us, amen, we can do the impossible things that God has predestined us to do. That is our rest. So beware, brethren. I'm reading from Hebrews, the third chapter, verse number 12. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily while it is called today. Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. I want to stop there because that's a lot. So, number one, unbelief is termed evil heart, which will lead to you departing from the living God. And instead, you will rely on yourself which is not alive unless Christ is alive in you. So you will become hardened through the deceitfulness. Now it means that you will be led towards sin. So what we want to remember is that we have become partakers of Christ. Only if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. So while it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not hearten your hearts as in the rebellion for who haven't heard rebelled. Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Now with whom was he angry 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned? And how did they sin? By disbelief. In the living God, the the perpetual, everlasting, immortal God, disbelief that he is able to save, that he is able to deliver, that he will lead you, empower you 
into your destiny, the book that you are to write, the countries that you are to minister to, the children that you are to help, the seniors, the prisoners in war. God may have even sent you to the actors and actresses, but you can't believe that God is the one that's speaking to your heart. Saints of God, it is time. We are living in perilous times. We're not ignorant of that. So now it is time for us to believe and have faith that God himself has called you, that God himself has given you these visions of impossible ways of how to tell the world of this living God, to put on those sandals, to give the gospel, put on the whole armor shield, your heart and, and, and the, the helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness and the belt of truth. And in your hand, the sword. This is the moment that we were all designed for. This is the hour of destiny. This is the moment that we are to walk in the promises. Amen. The promised land. Surely we have not gone through the wilderness. Surely we have not climbed the mountains to not actualize the promises of our great king, our great God. This is the moment. And here's what the word of God says, verse number 18. And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who did not obey? So we see that they cannot enter into the promised land. Because of unbelief. I'm going to pray. I, I want to say one more thing. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let, let us fear any of you seem to have come short of it. So basically what we're trying to say per the word of God, let us have faith. Amen. <laughs> Even God, uh, verse. I'm in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, verse number four, it says, for he has spoken in a certain place of the seventh day in this way, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again, in this place, they shall not enter my rest. Wow. Wow. So I guess I'm, I'm just, I just want us to understand there remains, therefore, a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. So let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest. Amen. Lest anyone fall according to the same amount of disbelief for the word of God is living, powerful, sharper than any two at sort piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrows. And there is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there's no creature hidden from God's sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of God to whom we must give account. So we must come boldly, amen, to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Our need is, do we believe the almighty God who has proven himself over and over again? We have lived even up to this moment, according to his grace, mercy, and his word and promises and goodness. And now here comes the moment of destiny. And will you have faith? to believe in this almighty God. Father God, I ask you to anoint the word that has gone forth today, Lord God, to empower us, your children, to not respond to destiny as the Israelites did in the 40, the ones that was in the wilderness for the 40 years, Lord God. But instead, Lord, let us walk in faith, walk in faith, Lord, after you, into the destiny that you have created for us to perform. And I ask you, Lord, for an end-time anointing, Lord, that would dispel fear, 
doubt, disappointment, discouragement, and would instead increase our measure of faith beyond our comprehension, Lord God, so that we can enter into the moment of destiny that awaits us. And in that promise, Lord, is your rest. Father, I thank you for this word today, and we will escape to heaven as we obey your word. Thank you, Lord. I pray today that this is fulfilled in all of us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Anybody want to see your loved ones? Mm, yeah.